Okay. You'll actually find this a highly short, I will try to keep it very, very short, educational video. I love, like, dropping videos that are short and very informative and completely and utterly unlike anything else on YouTube, something that no other photography channel has ever mentioned. I'll keep it short and sweet. Pixel Pitch. I assume you know what Pixel Pitch is. If not, look it up. It's basically like the little holes or the light gathering capability or capacitance or charge of uh, the light hitting your sensor. Let's talk about uh, something very, very simple, very simple. Pixel Pitch relational to several cameras. And as I've told you yesterday and many times before, the limitations of silicon wafer technology have really been reached. There's only so many ways you can pump, grind, and polish silicon. You know, lipstick on a pig, still a pig, right? Let's roll some numbers here. Very, very few numbers. Nikon D7100, a 24 megapixel camera, 3.9 micrometer pixel pitch, 4.2 micrometer pixel pitch, Nikon D500, that's a 20 megapixel camera, a little bit over 20, basically 20. Nikon D850, essentially the same pixel pitch as the D500, 4.3 micrometer. That, by the way, is a BSI sensor, backside illuminated sensor. You can actually, of course, crop in, and you basically have the same megapixels as an Icon D500. That's a 47 megapixel camera, which I also happen to have, but which is not sitting on the table currently. Backside illuminated sensor, that is. Fujifilm X-T2, 24 megapixel sensor. Okay, 3.9 micrometer pixel pitch. Okay, Samsung NX500. You know, Samsung kind of made crappy cameras, but the sensor on it was really wonderful. 28 megapixels. You notice that we've got here something that rises above the limit of 24 megapixels for crop sensor camera. And I will explain that very quickly to you. This is actually a really important video. Just stay tuned for a couple more minutes and you'll really, really learn something. Okay, 28 megapixels. That's also a backside illuminated sensor. Uh, specifically, actually, the Nikon uh, D850 could have really kept uh, significant uh, dynamic range and gone up to say like 54 megapixels but they wanted to have it wanted it to have really good uh, dynamic range by the way that's a uh, a, a tower jazz sensor made uh, uh, tower jazz actually owns former panasonic plants in japan so it's technically panasonic made sensor but it's owned by tower jazz and tower jazz owns part of panasonic panasonic owns part of tower jazz that's not the important part of this video the important thing is that to keep these cameras at a level where dynamic range is acceptable by the photography shooting public, these cameras, even though uh, you know, yeah, you know, one, you know, one of these cameras is a full frame, the Nikon D850, but it doesn't make any difference because cropped down, it's the same as the Nikon D500 since it basically has the exact same pixel pitch. The reason why all of these, at the level of the crop sensor or the DX sensor array, are at 24 megapixels except for the Samsung NX500 but there's a reason for that exception why it's not 24 it's 28 megapixels it's a backside illuminated sensor we're actually able to have better dynamic range and better native gain on the sensor because the wiring infrastructure has been moved from here to here logically so you want the light gathering capability to be up here and all the wiring that gets in the way to be down here well before on a regular bare sensor typical sensor from like Nikon D4, Fujifilm X-T2, the wiring is up here and the photo sites are down here. Makes more sense to stick the light gathering capability up here and the wiring down below, right? This is why these BSI sensors have maxed beyond at the level of the crop sensor 24 megapixels, but you will notice exception to the Nikon D500. The reason the Nikon D500 is 20 megapixels Instead of 24, as Nikon was able to give the Nikon D500 really, really awesome, as everybody knows. And I have three of those cameras, including the one filming my face right now. Really, really awesome low-light capabilities. Has better gain. And, of course, ISO is not part of exposure. ISO is applied gain, but that's a matter for another discussion. The point is that on a traditional sensor getting to the damn point, on a traditional sensor, 24 megapixels is the ceiling. The point at which, if you go above it on a traditional sensor, 
you end up with crap dynamic range and a camera that uh, professionals will look at and go, Yes, uh, camera crabs, crap dynamic range. I will not buy it. I'm going to return the camera. This is what we call the limitations of stretching and squeezing and smashing silicon wafer technology with lithography, silicon wafer lithography to the max. The only way to breach that and only able to breach it a little bit is in the case of, this. by the way, the Fujifilm X-T3 is going to have a 28 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the exact Samsung sensor in the NX500, but in the case of the Samsung, they were able to breach that 24 megapixel limit and bring it up to 28. You will notice that the pixel pitch on all these damn cameras is in a really tight range. Three point, uh, well, let's leave out the Samsung, which is 3.63 micrometers. Since that's a BSI sensor, they're able to make it a little bit smaller and cram more megapixels in there because it has better light gathering capability, not due to silicon wafer technology, but due to the infrastructure of bringing the wiring from here to here and light gathering capability at the top, same as the Nikon D850. All of these, 3.9 micrometer pixel pitch, 4.2 micrometer pixel pitch, 4.3, 3.9 in the case of the X-T2. You see those numbers? Do you see those numbers? 3.9, 4.2, 4.3, 3.9. They're all pretty much the same. The reason why they're the same is there's only so many ways that you can jack with silicon wafer lithography sensors. That is the limit at which all of these camera companies realize that, hey, we make it any smaller than this, the dynamic range will go to crap for professional photography use. The only way Samsung was able to slightly get around that with a 3.63 micrometer pixel pitch was have it be a backside illuminated sensor. This is also the reason why all of you that are like looking into the future of crop sensor technology need to realize that even with Backside illuminated sensors, which will be in the X-T3. There's absolutely no frigging doubt about that. I mean, just how certain are you? I'm 100% certain. That if you think that uh, crop sensor cameras are going to go above 28, let's say 30 megapixels. You, you, 30 is pushing it right to the very, very max. If you think they're going above that, you're delusional. Because they're not. Because then you would have a camera with a lot of megapixels, but crap dynamic range that nobody will accept. It's a wonderful camera with high megapixels. Too bad the dynamic range sucks. 3.9, 4.2, 4.3, 3 3.9. All those pixel pitches between D7100, D7200, which is the same sensor, by the way. D500, D850, and which is a full-frame camera, but it doesn't matter. Because exposure is per unit area, not per total area. Larger sensors don't gather more light. They have a larger area. Exposure is per unit area, not per total area. And I've already beaten that horse into the ground. This video is not as short as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, the pixel pitch is the same. If you're able to cut out the sensor on the D850 and make it a crop sensor, it'd still be the same as an Nikon D500. 20.8 megapixels, 21 megapixels. That's the magic. Let's repeat that really slowly because this is important. The magic limit of pixel pitch on a crop sensor camera is for, well, any camera actually, 4.2, 3.9 micrometers. The only way to make it slightly smaller, like in the case of the Samsung, which is 3.63 is have it be a backside illuminated sensor which has better native gain due to changing the wiring and infrastructure of the um, the formation of the lithography of that particular uh, silicon wafer tech uh, sensor for the uh, Samsung NX500. It's used in several Samsung cameras, not just the NX500. So that is the magical limit of a traditional sensor is 24 megapixels. And it's magical because that's the limit at which these camera companies realize if we go any smaller than this, we have more megapixels, but we got crap dynamic range. And so, boys and girls, that is why all these freaking different crop sensor cameras, other than backside illuminated sensors, are basically the same pixel pitch and pushing at the absolute ceiling of 24 megapixels. The ceiling. Can't go above it without compromising dynamic range 
And if there's one thing photographers don't like is compromised dynamic range. Boom! No other video like this on YouTube. I hope you like it. It was informative. And now you know something you didn't know before. There we go. Thank you so much for watching me. Like these videos, always click the link below. Make a small donation. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Hasta luego. Aloha, dos vidanya, uvijimse, paka. Catch you later, dude. Do 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 do.